This is a photograph I took of the, the river that runs around Kingsbury Water Park. So it's a nice little composition. The sort of water's up right up here and it sort of flows all the way around to the sort of right hand foreground. A few trees in the background, bare tree up here and a bit of foreground foliage here to help create the depth. So let's have a look at the materials before I try this one. Use the same palette. Colours always in the same place, We've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. All Cutman watercolours, just squeezed and laid to dry overnight. Um, and then the main brush is the cut down large rod rants and hake I use here in my jar of water. Nice slip on it, take off the excess water, the rest goes on the tea towel. Um, 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper and it's just clipped to a 9mm piece of plywood to hold it steady. So one quick look at the photograph again and then let's get cracking. So starting with the height, this is just clean water going onto the paper. This will just um, help diffuse the uh, background, keep it soft and uh, also stops the paper from going all crinkly, you're sort of stretching it as you go along. Just dipping the tips in, just to bring the hairs back together. And I'm going to start off with a bit of raw sienna. All the way down to the bottom, no real order to it, just bang it in. Just gives the background a bit of flavour. I'm going to clean the brush and just go Ultramarine, it's not one uniform, it's just uniform colour all the way down, you just sort of hit and miss it, creating spaces here and there, and then at the bottom I'm trying to create a sort of sense of light, just add a bit of Payne's grey to this, just to get some variation on the blue. A bit more water, just dipping the very tips into the water jar and then going Payne's grey, ultramarine and then just trying to create a bit of a bit of reflection in the water. This is going to be the water obviously at the bottom there, so just reflecting the light that's up in the earth, up in the sky. Just adding a bit of a in crimson. And then come we'll just add a few little, a few little clouds. There's no clouds in the uh, photograph, but it doesn't stop you from putting some in yourself. I'll do for that. Just reflect a little bit of that cloud in the water. And you can always take a dry tissue and take a little bit more out. The dirtier the tissue is, the more subtle the, the effect will be. It's not as absorbing as much as the paint off the paper. You can see that's the sort of dirty look. If I use a clean one, I'll just push that straight into the water. Never mind. If I use, hang on, just squeeze that in. If I use a clean one, you can see it's, it's coming up a lot stronger. That's what I'm going to do for the sky. Okay, for that. And you can see how the paper stretched like there, it's coming away from the board. So I'm just going to, it's not actually finished stretching yet, but I want it to be flat while I go in for the next bit. And I can always pull it tight again, a bit further into the painting. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to clean the brush. I'm just going to go straight into the raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow, and I've still got all the sky colours on there. And that's uh, over here we've got, I'm just wondering whether to, I'm going to give it a quick dry. The drier the paper, the, sort of, the stronger it's going to come off the brush. 
And you see the difference there between putting it on wet and putting it on dry. That's come off quite, quite strong. Just down to that river bank there. And then got, just using the finger now just to create a few, few little bushes, uh, trunks rather. You can always use the, uh, the rigger as well. Few more in with this. Just on there. Just, just cleaning the brush slightly. Just go back into the ridge. Try and get a bit of slightly different. That's not too different, is it? It's almost the same colour. Bit of brown, bit of green. Bang green, bit of red, that'll change it, you know, just bring it out in front of there, and green brown, just coming straight down, down to the river bank now. I don't want it to be perfectly horizontal, I just want to, just a slight, just as if it's coming just slightly closer on this left hand side. Caddies on it, you can't really see much. So I'm not going to worry too much about behind there because the sort of foreground on this right hand side, well, not the foreground, sort of middle ground, covers most of this up. So I'm not going to worry. I'll just put a few little flicks in there just to make it look as if there's something going on, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm just going to pull this flat again. paint on, it'll go on really strong, much stronger. So I'm just giving lemon yellow. Let's put a bit of Payne's grey on there as well. I want that to really show us against that. So look, now that really shows up now against the back. And, uh, and let's go back into the lemon yellow. A bit of raw sienna, lemon yellow. You see, I'm just leaving that background there. I'm, I'm not painting over it completely. Just enough there to create a bit of depth. So there's a couple of layers there now. You've got this foreground stuff and that background. Very little. The uh, light tone, because it's further away. Just dipping slightly into the ultramarine, just to create a bit different shade of green, a bit darker there. And as you come down, you've got like a like a tree trunk. First, I'll put the uh, sort of bank bank of the water in. Dipping the very tip, very tip into the water, the water jar, just to loosen the paint slightly, it'll get a little bit dry. Um, they're not in the picture, they're not in the photo, but I can't resist putting a few little rocks in there, just, just adds to the interest. It's such an easy, easy thing to do, but you get quite a nice effect from it. Now there's like a, like a bare tree over on that right hand side. So 
So let's just pop that in there. So it's sort of. You can use the rigger for this if you like, but I just like to use the the height brush. Just dip the tips in, just so the paint comes off a little bit freer. Trying to get the main sort of shape right. Wiping that on a tissue, and I'm just gonna. This is just the effect of all the little tweaks of branches rather than just painting the whole lot individually. It's a very light, um, dry, very dry brush now, it's not. Just set that right up to the top. Not much water on it. And then, Gives the impression of uh, loads of little fine twigs and branches. Too dry now, so I'm just dipping. I've just dipped the tips in just to loosen this paint up. Yeah, lemon yellow. Um, I think what I could do, which I've forgotten all about, is the reflections in the water. So what I'll do? Yeah, I'm just going to pull these down. I haven't bothered wetting the water. I'm just going to do it while it's dry. Wetting the water area. I mean, just do some just really light. Still have little stone earrings. Just pulling down a few little reflections. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here, to be honest. I'm just experimenting now. But I've got a very, very dry brush, so there's nothing going to really go on the paper. Just pulling it across, just see what it looks like, really. Um, oh, I'll do. I'm, I'm over. I'm overworking it now. For honest with you, that dry. Yeah, it's too dry. It's plenty of else. Um, right then. Now over to this left, left side. So I'm just trying to sort of to see the uh, photograph with the light reflecting off the screen. So over to this left hand side, foreground. Now it's very rough, sort of brackeny type. Yeah, let's get that a bit darker. Get a bit of brown in there as well. Just trying to get some sort of contrast. Good night there. Just working my way around the palette really. Just trying to get a bit of variation in this foreground. Um, just turning the brush around one way or the other. You can just flick it up like that. Just trying to just 
I'm trying to find different ways of creating effects, nice effects. Let's see if it's stronger up there. sort of breeds, I mean I've, I've, I don't know what this is going to look like really. I'll just paint over what I don't like. Some more, and, and then what you don't like, get the brush out and just paint it over there like that, something like that. And then just sort of with, maybe even like a, maybe a rock or something in there. Again, what you, what you're not keen on, just paint over. I think that's enough. Just messing about with that. And um, let's just put a couple of birds in the sky. Just making sure my hands clean. I'm just going to put them up in the in the light area so you can see them. Just keeping them nice and small, nice and subtle. And then what I might do, I might just put my name in with the card. Is it still? It's still wet enough to do that to scrape it out. I think I'm going to call that one. Call that one done. So. Let's see what it looks like with the mount on. So this is our finished painting with the mount on. Let's see how it compares to the photograph. So I've not changed too much round. Some of the colours are a little bit different. So the sky was a sort of mixture of raw sienna, ultramarine, which is reflected straight down into the water. I did it at the same time. That way you don't have to worry. If you do it separate, you have to worry about getting the same colours above and below, trying to get a match. That's so why I tend to do it at the same time. Um, what else we got in the sky? A bit of cloud, glittering, glittering crimson, and then a bit of tissue work there. Coming forward to these trees, what I have done, I forgot to put the reflections in. So I put the reflections in here, not, not very well I might add, and then completely forgot the reflections there, not to worry. Um, I've tried to vary it slightly, different colours, a few bushes and stuff moving across to these trees. Trunks put in by a, some using the rig, some using a fingernail. Just looks like it creates sort of the effect of lights in the trunk moving across. Right side of the river bank here. First, a few little, where it was dark, just scraped a few little. Rocks and stones there along the river bank. These trees put in using the hike. You could use a rigger if you like, and then just a very, very dry brush. Just put it on these end bits, just a sort of massive twigs. Foreground, just use the car just to scrape up some of these reeds and, and whatnot rather than often I'd use my fingernail or you can use a rigger brush if you like just use whatever whatever you can grab hold of and then just scrape out a few rocks here in the foreground just try and add a bit of texture well thanks for watching I hope you like that please subscribe if you haven't done so already you can also help me by commenting liking and sharing the video so keep practicing any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.